So in a previous tutorial, we started adding some dynamic interactions between Bob and his environment so that when we were in collision with the desk and we hit the space bar, we now got text that came into our dialog container through a variable. But let's say we wanted to have sort of multiple dialogues in there, right? We wanted a progression of, of text so that the next time we came in contact with this, it said something different. Well, we can do that by continuing sort of learning about variables. So let's let's set that up now. And remember, a variable is just a container to hold information. So let's come back to our desk and let's edit the object variables. And here's what we're actually going to do. We're going to, you can keep this here if you want. I'm going to blink it out though and I'm going to click this button here to add a child variable. And I'm going to call this child variable zero because uh, I just want to create a progression of dialogue that's linear, right? So it's going to go from zero to one. And a lot of times in programming, you'll start counting from zero. Um, you could make this one, you could call it whatever you want. For me though, because it just progresses um, only one way. I'm just going to use the numbers here and I'm going to add another child variable to this dialog and I'm going to call that one. Now this zero uh, dialog, I'm going to make this one now. This is my desk and when we call upon the one variable under dialog, um, Bob's going to get a little sassy and he's going to say we talked about this. It's still my desk. Now, if we hit apply, we have these variables here, and you'll notice that if we try to run this, it sort of messed up our messed up our dialogue a little bit here because now we need new ways to reference this. It has a zero value in that dialog because we haven't told the program how to deal with our child variables yet. Now there, there is one other issue. We need a way to keep track of what dialog we're using actually, right? So we're using zero, we're using one. We need just a way to keep track of that information when we've used zero already. So we'll go back to our variables and we're going to add a new variable here and we're going to call this one dialog count. And we're going to make dialog count equal to zero. And what this is going to do is when dialog count is zero, it's going to say use dialog zero um, information. When we add a number to this, when we make this dialog count one, it'll say use dialog one's information. Let's try this out. Let's actually program it in. So go to our code and we'll come down here to our Bob and his furniture section and we're going to um, modify this a little bit here <clears throat> by saying, uh, let's get rid of this for right now. Let's start a little bit from scratch here. So we've got a subcondition here that when Bob is in collision with the desk, do this. But then also under this subcondition, when this is happening, check for this too, and the space key is released, we'll do something. We need to now add another subcondition to this. So let's go ahead and add a subcondition to this. And now you see how it goes if this and if this, then this. Each one has to be under the previous one here. And what we're going to say here is if space key is released and we're going to check our variable here of our object by going common conditions for all objects, variables. We want to check the value of an object's variable and the object is desk. The variable is going to be checking the object, uh, the the uh, value of dialog count because that's how we're keeping track of which dialog to use. If it equals 
zero, okay, we want to um, to show. We want to load. Excuse me. We want to load the the uh, excuse me our text object. We want to actually load. Modify the text of text dialog. We want to make that equal to what's stored in our variable zero. So it would be object, common expressions for all objects. There we go. And the variable, object variable, desk. And for this one, for the child variable, I believe it's just you add the um, period or the point. And that would be dialog. Again, this is why making your variable names make sense is very important. It's dialog, period, and then the name of your child variable, which is for us is zero. Hit OK. Now, if we did this correctly, it should. Oh, we've got to show the actual layer. Don't forget that. Show layer. We want to show the dialog layer here. Mm -hmm. So it loads the information from our variable and then it'll show the dialog. Let's try this. If we did it correctly, it should load that first uh, child variable's information. This is my desk. There it is. All right, great. Now, if we come back here again, it's still the same one because we haven't changed our counter. So that means we have to update our we have to update our uh, variable as well here. So we're going to add another action to that section and say variables under common actions for all objects modify a variable of an object, the desk. We want to modify dialog count because that's the counter we're keeping track of which dialog to use. And we'll just make that equal. You, if you could just say add one, but since we only have two pieces of dialog, uh, we're going to just set it equal to one here, because we won't go up any more than that. Now, yeah, it moved our variable to one, but we still need code here to. Um, to say if it's one, then go to the new variable, the new dialog text. So we still want to keep this here. Space key is released, right? And we want to add, though, a condition to it. So we'll click up here. And we'll, we'll copy this, paste it in. And we'll change this to variable count equals one, right? So that I'll check to see it gets one. We'll copy this, copy this. Whoops. Let's undo that. There we go. Copy this, paste. And we'll, we won't copy this actually because we don't want to update our variable anymore. So if it's one, we do want to change that to make our new to use our new child variable one and show layer of dialogue. Let's just see if this works. A lot of times programming there is trial and error. See it went right to the second one, so something's off. The way we uh, laid out our logic here, it's 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 going to all, all of these. Uh, it's going right to the second one, I mean. So let's think this through for a second. We still are good on, on this, right? If space key is released, but I think we need an and condition here. So we're going to go to advanced, and we're going to go to and, so that we force these things to be true. Space key is released, and, and let's move this to there, and if all of these conditions are true, is zero, then execute that. We'll need an and condition down here too. Let's put that in, and let's move this to where it needs to be, up at the top. Mm 
let's make this one and get rid of this here. Let's see if that fixes it. Let's see if that does it. So this seems to me like what's going on is <clears throat> when we click on this first one here, it updates the variable so quickly that it automatically loads as one. Um, so let's try to add another subcondition here to fix this. Let's add that the layer has to be invisible. So dialog layer, let's invert it so that test if the layer is, is visible or not. So if all these conditions are true, if the dialog layer is invisible, right, not visible, and the dialog count of, of desk, uh, yeah, dialog count of desk is equal to zero, which it is at the beginning, we set it equal to zero, then do these things, right? Let's copy and paste that into this too and see if we can slow this down a little bit. Let's see if that makes the difference here. All right, look at that. This is my desk. Now when we come back, if we press spacebar, it should go to the second one. That did it. All right, so let's, let's figure out here for a second what happened. What happened was when we didn't have this condition here, it was running through this, I think, so quickly that it automatically loaded the next one and said um, variable equal to one, well since that's the case let's go right to this one. But we forced it to slow down by saying let's make sure first that the dialog layer is not visible and the dialog count is zero before we do this. And this, believe it or not, is just sometimes how programming works. You have to figure out, you have to think like a machine and figure out what it's doing in what order. So that was a little bit difficult but we were able to slow it down enough to load the proper variable as we needed it. I hope I explained that um, good enough for you to understand. Uh, basically just slowing down the machine to tell it to take its time and do all this first before jumping right into this next one here.